afternoon in old Manhattan, and most folks are going home from work to their supper that their wives had prepared for them. But when the kingfish got home tonight, there was no supper ready. And believe me, he was really put out about it. And in the future, when I come home, I expect to find you here with my supper ready. Keep your big mouth shut. You listen to me. I tell you, you try a trick like this again, and I'll walk out of here so fast it'll make your head swim. You understand? And that's what I'm going to tell her as soon as she gets here. Yeah, I want to tell you something. Yes, what is it? Uh, good evening, honey. I certainly am tired. Have you been somewhere, honey lamb? Have you been somewhere, honey? If it's any of your business, I've been to a meeting of the women's club. And after the meeting, I went home with Miss Winslow. She's one of our new members. Now, see us, Sapphire. You're spending too much time with those old hens. Your face is here cooking supper. Miss Winslow has such a lovely character. What do I care? She's got such a charming personality. Look, I don't want you to have nothing to do with her personality or not. And she just come into $20,000. When can I meet that charming creature? You say she just come in to twenty thousand dollars? Yes. The story's in the evening paper. She inherited the money from an uncle. The paper's on the coffee table. It's right there in the second section. <laughs> Yes, 
to marry. May you find happiness despite it. Yeah. Well, not to throw a wet blanket on things, but you know, I don't like the sound of this, Andy. You man a girl just cause she got money. After all, in marriage, money ain't everything. Yes, Amy, it may not be everything, but adding money to marriage is like putting on juice and castor oil. It makes the whole mess a whole lot easier to take. <laughs> well, of course, it ain't none of my business. I just hope you're going to be happy, son. Well, don't worry about me. The kingfish is going to have Sapphire introduce me to the gal. Well, what makes you so sure this girl going to like you? Like me? Listen, name of down at the pool hall. They don't call me passion flower for nothing. <laughs> well, listen, honey. Why won't you introduce Andy to Mrs. Winslow? Now, give me one good reason. Because Andy Brown is a no-good loafer. And since that article come out in the paper, Miss Winslow's got all kinds of suitors. Mm. You must be crazy to think that a woman with the money that Miss Winslow's got would be interested in anybody like Andy Brown. Well, I never looked at it like that. You can help me with the dishes. Why, you read about it in the society column every day where women with as much money as Mrs. Winslow has could buy themselves a European title. Hmm, a title. Buy ourselves a title. A title. Well, the first thing in the morning, I think I'll go over and have a talk with Baron Brown. <laughs> Well, the next morning, with lightning's help, the kingfish really went to work on Baron Brown. Yes, sir, for once, lightning was really living up to his name. Oops, here he come again. The lily is really being guilty. <laughs> well, Lightning done brought the geranium, Andy. Yeah, how do I look? Hey, you look like something out of that big operetta, the stupid prince. Uh, you say when I meet this Mrs. Winslow that I'm supposed to be a baron from Austria? That's right, Andy. You're right off the boat from Vienna. Okay, Kingfish, all set. Uh, my privilege. Allow me, Baron. Yeah. Make way for the baron. the court, Andy. Listen, Kingfish, I can't go through with this. I'm too nervous. Uh, take it easy, Andy. We got 20,000 bucks tied up here. But Kingfish, he ain't gonna think I know Baron. Oh, Andy, this gal is from the stick someplace. She ain't gonna know what's happening. All you gotta do is drop a few German words like Lieber Augustine and Wiener Schnitzel and stuff like that. Uh, you done told her we was coming, Kingfish? Oh, yeah. I done called up and give you a big build-up, son. A big build-up. Well, I hope she don't look as bad as a picture. That's all I got to say. Uh, by the way, Andy, in society, we, we run up against an object that will provoke boisterous laughter. Oh, yeah. But common politeness dictates that you do not laugh in the object's face. Yeah. According to Emily Post, you giggle into a handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why, Mr. Stevens, won't you come in? I hope you haven't brought a handkerchief. Mrs. Winslow, it's my privilege to present to you that famous nobleman from Europe and the continent, Baron von Braunspiegel. Oh, how do you do, Baron? It is a pleasure to meet such a distinguished-looking man. Likewise. 
Oh. I took the liberty of having some tea made. Won't you sit down? Now listen to that. A jingle like that will make you independent for life. Gentlemen, won't you be seated? And now, Baron, tell me, just what made you decide to leave Vienna? Well, there was nothing left to do. You see, I never could get along very well with them foreigners. Foreigners? Oh, you see what the Baron means is, uh, although he's a genuine dyed in the wool Austrian Baron, he's also a neutralized American. Oh, I guess that's why you speak such good English, Barry. Oh, yeah. Actually, my father was a beautiful pedestrian, but my mother was born right here on the old side. <laughs> so I didn't have no trouble losing my German brogue or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, like all Europeans, the band family was pretty well spread out, especially my mama. <laughs> Well, speaking of marriage, Miss Winslow, like we was doing, the Baron informed me that he's looking for a little baronet uh, to take back to the old country to share his ancestral chapeau. Well, I hope you find the right girl, Baron. Well, confidentially, the reason why the Baron is up here, he done seen your picture in the newspaper. Oh. <laughs> what does he think of me? Well, he mumbled a few words in his native tongue, then he there shot up in the air like a German shepherd. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Stevens, I can never thank you enough for bringing the Baron up today. He is just too wonderful. Well, I can tell that the Baron thinks you are charming, too. It ain't often that he condescends to mingle with the uh, hoy polluted. Well, I'll be running along, because I know you and the Baron got a lot of things to talk about. Oh, Mr. Stevens, must you be going? Well, according to the old slogan, three of the crowd. And I wouldn't want to interrupt any little love talk that you and the band has in regard to finances or nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, never mind waddling to the door. I can find my own way out. <laughs> good day, Baron. And a uh, good one to you, too. Goodbye, Mr. Stevens. Well, toodaloo, all. <laughs> oh, Baron. Tell me all about yourself. I know you had some wonderful, wonderful adventures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget forget the time when I was in Hamburg and I was strolling down the route in the city. And I met the king of Sweden. And he came to Sweden. Uh, he says, uh, how do you do? Uh, I said to him, how do you do, king? He said, how do Ah, here we go. Dinner with Mrs. Winslow. your courtships of Miles Standish, it had nothing on the courtship of Andrew H. Brown. Yes, sir, Andy really played the part of a suave continental lover to perfection. Well, almost to perfection. And the next thing in order was Picnic with Elizabeth. With all lovers, there was dancing in the dark, moonlight walks, picnics, and rides in the country. Needless to say, all this activity made quite an impression on Mrs. Winslow. And needless to say, Mrs. Winslow made quite an impression on the car. Now the boy is really closing in. <laughs> and then come the fatal evening when our gallant lover popped the question. 
think we better sit down. This here problem is wearing out my rug. I tell you, Calhoun, me and Andy going in debt. We got over fifteen hundred dollars in bills. Andy just got to marry this gal. Now listen, fella. You shut up, Calhoun. We got to find some way to eliminate this other fella. Now what must we do? Calm down, fellas. Calm down. The thing to do is see which way the wind is blowing. I tell you, I'll get a hold of this fella Winslow and have him up here for a nice friendly chat. A nice friendly chat. <laughs> a nice friendly chat. That's what I asked you up here for, Mister. A nice friendly chat. Now don't you raise your voice at me again. Now see here, Mister. You done deserted this woman 15 years ago. And she done had you declared legally dead. And there ain't no way that you can legally touch this woman's money. I don't care about that. I got a pretty good nuisance value in this setup. <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, oh, listen, I don't give that for my ex-wife. All I'm interested in is money. Now, if this fellow Brown was to come up with, uh, uh, with, say, a thousand bucks, I'll go tell him you won't hear from me again. Now, wait a minute. A thousand bucks? Well, that's out the question. Listen, all I got to do is show my face, and Brown's chances go down the drain. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the proposition up to my client. All right. I'll give you till tomorrow noon. I'll go up and have a talk with him. And that's a thousand dollars cash. You understand? Yeah, sir. <laughs> In the future, I'm going to have to start wearing bow ties. Missing husband is the best racket we ever thought of. Oh, 